Hi boys and girls, welcome to the Everyday Math Lesson Unit 2 Review. The materials that you'll need today would be your pencil and then the Unit 2 Math Review Packet. If you don't have one, then please write your answers on either a whiteboard or in a notebook. Let's get started. This is what the front page of your Everyday Math Unit 2 Review looks like. You could start by making sure you have your name at the top of your page. So boys and girls, I'm going to ask that you solve these first four problems and I'll quickly explain what you're going to do in the four problems. So for number one, it says add and then write the turnaround fact. For number two, complete the fact family for the numbers 7, 12, and 5. You can write your numbers in the triangle and then fill in the addition and subtraction problems. For question number three, you're adding. And for question number four, you're subtracting. So if you could pause and solve and then press play when you're ready to check these first problems. All right, second graders, and if I'm going too fast or I'm ready to give an answer to something you haven't solved yet, please press pause as often as you need. So six plus two, you should have had eight. Then when we're doing the turnaround fact, you would do two plus six equals eight. For the fact family, so I have 12 on top, I have seven and five. If you have your seven and five flip-flopped, that's okay. Now you could have had these in a different order, but you should have had the same four problems, just maybe in a different order is fine. So seven plus five equals 12. Five plus seven equals 12. 12 minus 5 equals 7, and 12 minus 7 equals 5. When I'm adding, I know 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, 0 plus 8 is 8. When I'm subtracting, I know 6 minus 0 is 6, 13 minus 1 is 12, and 8 minus 5 is 3. And if you're noticing that you have any mistakes, please fix those with your pencil and eraser. Let's now look at the second half of this page. So for numbers five and six, you're filling in the empty frames. So for number five, our rule is plus four. So you're gonna start at six and you're gonna add four for each of these boxes. For number six, our rule is minus five. You're gonna start at 55 and you're gonna subtract five for each of these boxes. Press pause to solve and then press play when you're ready to check your answer. All right, so I know that six plus four is 10, 10 plus four is 14, they give me 18, 18 plus four is 22, 22 plus four is 26. Now I'm subtracting 55 minus five is 50, 45 minus five is 40, Minus 5 again is 35, and then I should have 30. So double check to make sure you have this correct and fix any of your mistakes. We'll look at the next page. So can you look at problem number 7? Now it maybe says write 10 names for the number 9. I'm just going to ask that you come up with 5 names today for the number 9. For question 8, it's going to ask you to cross out the names that do not belong. So think about which of these do not equal 13 and cross those out. For number nine, you're gonna add or subtract the following problems. So can you press pause and solve and then press play when you're ready to check? All right, second graders, and if I'm going too fast or I'm revealing something you haven't solved yet, please press pause as often as needed. Write five names for the number nine. You could have had very different names than I did, but I'm just going to show you what I came up with today. So I have four plus five equals nine. I have a nickel and four pennies. I have 12 minus three, seven plus two, and then I have nine tallies. For question eight, cross out the names that do not belong. So looking in the second column, I have 22 minus 10, which does not belong because that would equal 12. 
I have 10 plus 4, which equals 14. That does not belong. 6 plus 9 is 15, which does not belong. And 3 plus 7 plus 4 is 14, which does not belong. Adding or subtracting for number 9, 10 plus 7 is 17. 7 plus 6 is 13. 3 plus 3 is 6. 11 or 1 plus 11 is 12. 8 minus 4 is 4. 15 minus 9 is 6. And 17 minus 7 is 10. If you're noticing that you have any mistakes, please fix those before moving on. Now we'll take a look at the second half of the page. So for question number 10, circle the numbers in the tens place for each of these numbers. For 11, circle the number in the ones place for each of these numbers. For question 12, show two ways to make 27 cents using either quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. And for 13, show two ways to make 50 cents using either quarters, dimes, and nickels. So boys and girls, if you can press pause, solve these four problems, and then press play when you're ready to check. All right, so looking at number 10, circle the number in the tens place. So you should have had the seven circled in 79 the three circled in 36, the zero circled in the number 108, the five circled in 352, and the one circled in the number 1416. Then in question number 11, circle the digits in the ones place, you should have circled the one in the number 51. You should have circled the five in the number 85, the four in the number four, the nine in the number 19, the one in the number 271, and the three in the number 73. For question 12, show two ways to make 27 cents. There's lots of different ways that you could have come up with. These are the two ways that I chose today. I did a quarter and two pennies because a quarter is 25 and this would bring me to 26, 27 and I also did two dimes which I would have 10, 20, 25, 26, 27. Show two ways to make 50 cents. I did two quarters and five dimes. If you're noticing that you have any mistakes, please fix those mistakes before moving on. We're now going to look at the page that starts with the number 14. So for question 14, show two ways to make $1.10 using quarters, dimes, and nickels. For question 15, find the rule and complete the table. Don't forget to add your rule in this box. For number 16, find the rule and complete the table. Again, don't forget to fill out this box. If you could press pause to solve and then press play when you're ready to check your answers. So there's lots of different ways that you could show $1.10, but these are the two ways that I chose to show that. For 14, so the first one I did four quarters, which equals a dollar, plus a dime, which has 10 cents, one dollar and 10 cents. And then I used two quarters to bring me to 50, and five dimes, which brings me to another 50. 50 plus 50 is a dollar, and then two nickels to get me to one dollar and 10 cents. For number 15, so if I'm looking at six to eight, I can see that I am adding 2, which is my rule. Then I know 13 plus 2 is 15, 16 plus 2 is 18, 21 plus 2 is 23. Now if I'm given the out, I need to do the opposite. So I need to think 12 minus 2, which would get me to 10. 
Then if I'm at 14 and I'm going to 11, I can see that my rule is to subtract or minus 3. 16 minus 3 is 13. 20 minus 3 is 17. 7 minus 3 is 4. Now if I'm given the out, I need to do the opposite. So I need to do 15 plus 3, which would be 18. Please fix any mistakes before moving on to our last page. All right, so we're looking at question number 17. Look at the chart and then answer the questions. Favorite types of cookies, number of people, types of cookies. You can see our cookies are chocolate chip, sugar cookie, and peanut butter. So our first question says, which cookie was the most popular? Then we have which cookie was the least popular. And our last one is how many people like peanut butter cookies. Press pause to solve and then play when you're ready to check your answers. All right, so the cookie that was the most popular, that means that the most people liked that. And I can see that that would be chocolate chip because chocolate chip has the tallest bar. The least popular means that the not very many people liked that, which I can see was sugar cookie because that had the smallest bar. How many people liked peanut butter cookies? I can count my number of bars, which would be two. If you're noticing that you have any mistakes, please check those. And that finishes up our review. Good luck on your test.